All right, DK Metcalf, Seattle Seahawks wide receiver. <laughs> he had that viral NFL moment where he chased down Buda Baker of the Arizona Cardinals and stopped a pick six. That led to all sorts of speculations about how fast this guy could run on the track. But unlike every other guy we've speculated about in recent memory, he's actually going to put on spikes and he's actually going to go do it, Olivia. What was your reaction? He's going to be running in the USATF Golden Games uh, this Sunday at Mount Sac, lining up against the solid field. What was your first reaction when you saw that, hey, this is actually going to happen. He's actually going to do it. Well, Kevin, um, you probably have seen it all over social media. There are have been a lot of mixed feelings about it. We've seen athletes say, okay, I'm ready. Like, let's see what's going to happen. And a lot of athletes are not too happy about it. And I'm kind of like, to be honest with you, I'm kind of in the middle. I did not expect for it to actually come to fruition. We see a lot and just being a former athlete, like, and I can – attest to a lot of athletes that probably have had this conversation with football players. They always want to say, hey, pick a day and a time and we'll race. Like it's happened to me at Texas A&M. It's just one of those things. Um, but I think I was actually really shocked to see that this is really going to happen. But my thoughts behind it is I'm actually really excited. I'm excited to see we're finally, I don't want to say put to rest because I feel like we're just going to have more conversations about this, but it's track mm -hmm. speed versus football speed. Like we're actually gonna be able to see it. And I don't know if you had a chance to look at Lolo Jones's post on Instagram, but literally all of her comments is how I feel. It's just, you know, I think it's great to see this competition really arise and he's gonna have great competition there as well. Um, I don't think he's going to win. I wanna put that out there, but I think it's gonna be a very interesting matchup for this race. Yeah, I mean, if he won, I think truck would melt down as a collective yes. whole. I give him credit. I give him credit because he's actually doing it. Actually, not, no one's just posting online. He's, he's, no one's speculating about it anymore. It's, mm -hmm. I'm going to line up, I'm going to put on spikes and I'm going to do it. So as a track community, I get it. Everybody's a bit territorial. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You want to be protective of your sport. But at the same time, what always happens, Olivia, when someone does something fast in another sport and everyone says, well, he could beat Bolt, everybody jumps in mm -hmm. the replies and everybody says the same thing. Yep. Well, put, put on spikes and find out. Show up to a meet and find exactly. out. Well, Metcalf's actually doing that. So I give him immense, I give him immense credit because, listen, nobody wants to be beaten. No athlete wants to be beaten in any sport. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the nature yeah. of, of a high-level athlete is they're very competitive. Nobody wants to be embarrassed. So he's putting himself out there. I wonder, though, because you read some of these articles, he's clearly interested in pursuing this. He's, he's mentioned the – he's mentioned, um, you know, he co co uh, communicated with USATF about getting in this meet. He has to have some idea how fast he is, right? Which is an interesting part of the story. He didn't run the 100 and 200 in high school, right? He ran the hurdles. Right. He jumped. There's been some video of him running running relays. But he has to have some sort of idea of how fast he is. So he has to have some sort of idea where he would fit in in the pecking order in this meet. And he's still agreeing to do it, which makes me think that he's going to be able – to hold his own. Now, he could just be incredibly confident and he wouldn't be the first pro athlete to be incredibly confident. Um, but that that jumped out to me as well, too. The fact that, hey, it's not like he's jumping in a random all-comers meet. You know, he's not jumping in an Olympic final. He's not jumping into a Diamond League. But he's in a race with Ronnie Baker, Mike Rogers, Craven Gillespie, Kyrie, a lot of sub 10 second guys that he's going to, to race against in Mount Sac. Yeah, he's probably very high with his confidence right now. And I think we're starting to see that a little bit. And um, like I mentioned, I'm really excited to see just how, not only for the athletes, but how when, when it's all lined up, how it's actually going to play out. I think it's going to be really exciting to see. But speaking of that, I want to put this into context. And again, with him being a football player, he has his pads, like, He's probably going to feel a lot lighter, so he's probably taking that into consideration. He's going to be having spikes. I don't, not too sure. familiar with like the weight of a football cleat versus a track spike. I'm assuming a track spike's probably <laughs> a lot lighter. Um, so right. he's probably thinking about all of this in the back of his head, like, okay, if I can run this fast on the football field, 
I can kind mm -hmm. of carry that over. But one of the things I want to mention is, and I think from a lot of athletes standpoint is it takes a lot, there's a lot of technique that's involved in sprinting. It's not just putting on some spikes and hitting the trap. Like there's a dry phase we have to train. Like imagine all the years of Usain Bolt training and how long mm -hmm. it's taking him to break, you know, these world records. And he has a lot of talent. I know we're not talking about, you know, DK running a Usain Bolt time, but just to put into yeah. perspective, like these are athletes that train for this year round all the time. They bleed it. They, they have so much passion. And so I think it's just going to be, I wonder if there's going to be a lot of trash talking when we get on this starting line, but it's going to be really exciting to see. But Kevin, <laughs> I have a question for you with all of that sure. being said, there has been a lot of questions now and predictions of what he's going to run. So how fast do you think DK is going to run on this at this meet? I think I'm on the more ambitious side of things. I think I'd put the over under at 10.35 for his okay. 100. Conditions being okay. all equal. I think he might get a guy or two because you've been in enough sprint races. You know, sometimes people just have a bad one, right? And he, mm -hmm. he could be that guy who catches a bad one in this race. Uh, I want to ask you in a second about the, the technical challenges of starting and how difficult that is to do. But I would think... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mid-10s, I think, is perfectly reasonable. I think if he ran anything faster than 10-2, that would be a phenomenal performance by him. He's six foot four, so he's yes. really big for a sprinter. We, we look at Bolt, six foot five. Obviously, things worked out pretty well for Usain Bolt, but he is the exception. He's not the rule. What, what sort of time do you think is possible? Great question. I'm kind of on that same playing field that you mentioned. I, I love ranges. So I was thinking on a good day, if he is like on point with everything, I give him about a 10-3. Um, mm -hmm. I, I see him running between anything between a 10-3 and a 10-5. That is my prediction. Yeah. And Corey and Brian will tell you I'm a range kind of person. I'm not someone that's going to drop <laughs> you a point on point time. But that is where I think DK's at. Probably between okay. a 10-3 and a 10-5. Because I know the speed is there. But like I mentioned, the track speed is verse is different than football speed. So that is where I think DK is going to finish off at. Fair, fair. Okay, so tell me, a start. How long does that take to come together? He hasn't run track in five years. I'm assuming he's been working, let's just assume for the sake of argument, from mm -hmm. 2016 up until a couple months ago, he did not do any block starts because he did not run track in college. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming before mm -hmm. Seahawks practices, he wasn't pulling the blocks out there with Pete Carroll and saying, hey, let me do some block starts before I run these routes. But let's assume a couple months ago when he got this mm -hmm. idea, he did start doing starts. A start is such a huge part of a 100-meter race. How long does that take to come together? How good can you get in a start in just a few months? That's a really great question, Kevin. And I think it's honestly a very tough one to answer because in when it comes to sprinting that is essentially the race and you mentioned mike rogers is in this race this is a veteran in the sport he's probably one of the fastest gentlemen we have seen in in the sport of track and field to come out of the blocks so now you have someone that focuses on blocks all the time versus dk who probably has been doing it like you said for the last several months um but another thing that i'm taking in taking into consideration when you think of the the combine right when they do their 40 yards like they have to be mm -hmm. at you know a three point they are starting still they're starting down and they explode mm -hmm. out it's different when you have blocks behind you because we're not at a three point you're you know you have your feet in the in the blocks you have your hands down on the track how is he mm -hmm. going to react because mm -hmm. in a combine mm -hmm. you know um but when you come to the starting blocks for a starting race there's a gun so how is he going to react how right. far out is he going to drive out of this drive phase? And, you know, meters are longer than yards, so it's longer than that. And we all know he knows how to run on the football field. But I don't <laughs> think it's going to be the prettiest block start. And, and we're all track athletes here. And we know what a good block start looks like. Like, look at Trayvon Brumel, how he just ran um, this past weekend. That was incredible. I don't see that happening from DK. I just don't. It, it's not something that you're going to be automatically be able to to get in a few months. It takes years to really grasp how to get out of the starting blocks efficiently with power and with speed. So I feel like he's going to struggle mainly in that block start. It's not, he's running against one of the fastest men in the sport at the moment. So that's going to be something yeah. he has to take into consideration as well. 
But one advantage he might have is he's done it before. I don't know how good of a starter he was in high school. Yeah. I mean, bigger and faster or, I mean, obviously his body is different than he was in high school. We can assume that. But is starting, I don't know if you ever did a start and then took five years off from t doing a start in the blocks, but is it like riding a bike or is it something that gets rusty if you don't do it? Well, to be honest with you, when I was racing uh, Lincoln at the NCAAs for that year <laughs> or whatever we did, I felt completely rusty. But I did notice, like, my body was like, oh, okay, we're <laughs> – that was a really funny moment. We need to bring that back. Um, it's probably yeah, archived yeah. somewhere. But, um, like, my body felt rusty. And I can't remember the last time, like, I sprinted coming out of blocks. And we mm -hmm. did something, Brian and myself, we were working on this project, and I was just coming – I was spiking up, and I was, you know – not in blocks, mm -hmm. but I was coming from a down start and my body did feel like the muscle memory was there. But again, it was not mm -hmm. as explosive as how I remember competing at Texas A&M and my post-collegiate um, races afterwards. So yes, that might be an advantage for him. But again, we're talking about, you mentioned Ronnie Baker, Mike Rogers, mm -hmm. Craven Gillespie, Kyrie King. Like these are people that have been working on block starts for months now. Mm -hmm. So it's going to just mm -hmm. look completely different it probably won't feel the same for dk from where it was um a couple years ago to where it is now yeah yeah it'll be fun to watch i'm i'm very interested in him doing it i think it's gonna bring a bunch of eyeballs to the sport i think if he does well in this and he is really if he's really sincere about trying to get to the trials uh i mean he'll have other opportunities to run even if he goes out there and runs way off the pace it's not as if he's not gonna be able to find another meet so this is something he wants to do. He's going to have chances to do it. That's the thing about track, right? There's always a meet. There's always a meet that you can get into yeah. and fi find people to, to compete with. So I'm excited about that. I wanted to...